Yeah. Good. No, coach. We played Coach Rule yesterday. Coach, there was probably about thirty people tried to team up and beat him, and uh, and uh, Jarrett wish on, and he was about thirty and zero. He beat the brakes off of us. So we're all chasing Coach Rule in the pickleball world. I, I know last week on the radio you said you wanted to uh, throw a lot at these guys and see what they could handle. How, how's it gone a few days in and that, that process? I guess? Uh, we we did throw a lot at them, so we we accomplished that. Um, you know, the ebb and flows of practice is, uh, you know, pretty consistent with what it usually is over the last couple of years that we've been doing this. Is, you know, a lot of guys, they're grinding at it. Uh, we've practiced more than we've met since spring break. And so, you know, they left for a week after we installed a lot of this stuff before spring break and we're on their own. Then they came back and we went right into practicing. So, uh, you know, I would say they're above average from a retention standpoint. It's just now, it's one thing to retain it. It's another thing to go execute it consistently. How many people have asked you what the offense is going to be like just walking around and, and even your players? Like, how often do you get that question and what do you tell them? Not a lot from the players because they can kind of watch the, you know, the stuff that we've done in the past and, and see. Uh, everybody wants to know what it looks like, you know. And in our brain, you, you, you kind of know what you want it to look like, but it's always going to be, you know, you're always going to go to the side of, of what you have from a personnel standpoint. Uh, you know, the one consistent thing that we can guarantee is we're going to try to play clean football, protect the football. Uh, people talk about balanced offense. It's not, you know, throw it 50%, run it 50%. It's just there's going to be times in the game we need to run the ball, and we've got to be able to do that at a high level. And there's going to be times in the game where we need to throw the ball, and we need to do that at a high level. So everything we do daily is just trying to inch closer to those goals. It's still the first week, um, but what are some of your early impressions of how things are going? Uh, I love this team. I, I love offense, defense, not just the offense, but just uh, from the off season. Uh, the competition week, to the first couple of days of spring practice, these guys compete. They like to play football. Uh, they like each other, they like being around each other, they like competing against each other. So uh, I'm real excited about where I think, you know, I'm, I, I'm not coming out of uh, three days thinking, oh, crap, this is what I thought it was going to be. It's even higher than I thought it would possibly be from just, I mean, what we have a chance to do here. What kind of personnel do you feel like you have at this point? Like, where do you feel like you're strong based on what you have right uh, after three days, I don't want to say something, and then after week 10 or whatever you say, well, you said after the third day of practice, but uh, I'm really excited. The, the core group of our offensive line is working well. I mean, they're, you know, Coach Raola does an unbelievable job with those guys. They're a very tight knit group. Uh, we have a lot of tight ends with a lot of different bodies that uh, can do a lot of, you know, really cool things. And, you know, that's the hardest position on the field. So when we talk about throwing a lot of guys, they have like double of everything because they have to pass protect, they have to, you know, run block, they have to go run routes. So, they're the ones that are having to really go extra uh, in the classroom to make sure that they're ready to go at practice. Uh, running backs, you know, been productive thus far. Had, had a good day today. And then the quarterbacks, we have, you know, we have five quarterbacks that have started games in, in college. So uh, you know, just they're competing every day. Uh, you know, just trying to make sure that you know, Coach Rule is different than any coach I've ever worked for. He wants every single human to get as many reps as they possibly can. You know, he's not one of those guys that's just going to be the you know the good players get reps. Everybody's getting reps, so that's a blessing for for us with as many as quarterbacks as we have because they're they're getting a lot of reps and getting a lot of you know not only just mental reps but physical reps. Could you say who's getting the most reps at quarterback with the ones right now? Uh, I promise you, they're as balanced as possible because you know we went into it trying to you know see what every one of them can do, and you know we do the way that we do our team periods. It's it's split up where basically they're alternating every. Certain amount of plays, so that's they're not all equal, but they're all within probably ten plays of each other. Okay. You've got some veteran guys who are new to the program, like Billy and of course Jeff. How, how have those guys? Um, you know, what's the learning curve like for them in comparison to you know, guys who have been together for a few years? Uh, it's you know, Billy and Jeff are both unique because they've played a ton of football. Uh, Billy's a you know very high fo- he loves football. You know, he's super hyper competitive, and he wants the ball and. Uh, you know he's he he's caught a lot of balls. Uh, you know when he was at Virginia, he's a you know very very smart kid, very very high football IQ kid. So you know things are coming pretty natural to him. Just the same way, just you know he's played for some really good coaches, some really good coordinators in the last couple of years, some really good quarterback coaches. So he already has kind of a process of learning. So this is not really you know it's new to him, and he's got to go get you know the reps so he can be successful at it. But it's not overwhelming. I think he's kind of it's been not an easy transition, but. Not a very hard one for him. Mark, what makes Billy so versatile? Um, what does he do really well? Uh, well, he's really, really tough, and he's you know knock on wood, very, very tough, durable, and he can do you know many things for you. He is small in stature, but you know he can play inside, he can play outside. 
Uh, he can go in the backfield, do things out of the backfield at times. So, you know, he's shown it his time at Virginia and then shown, you know, just a short amount of time here that he's able to do, a, you know, a bunch of different things for this offense. You guys have had a lot of changes just in the three months you've been here in the tight end spot. Position changes, you know, transfers, guys who've left, guys who are new. What, what's, your, what's your vision for that position with the players you have out there right now? Well, we have the body types, you know, it's what we've always, you know, what I've always wanted to have on an offense. I've never had this many uh, tight ends, but I mean, we want to be in 13 personnel at times, you know, where you have a tight end that's maybe a bigger guy that puts his hand down and he's blocking the CD gap. And you have another tight end that might be, you know, a little bit shorter that's playing more of the fullback type. And then you have another tight end that might be just a little bit undersized and he's playing in the slot, but they're all tight ends and they're all having to be counted as tight ends. So. Uh, as many as we can get out there at once is awesome for me. I think we're going to have a chance to have you know really good depth at that position. Coach, we'll mention uh, Janera Bonner as a guy who's getting work there in a chess piece. What, what, is that, what does that mean for you? Uh, he's just super athletic. And he's, you know, the number one thing is he had to accept the role. And he's, done, you know, he's not flinched. And he's gotten better and better and better. Uh, you know, just we were out in pads today. So, you know, you, the, the first thing you want to see is Willie put his face in there, and he did all day today. So with his explosiveness and continuing to shape his body the right way to get to where he can play that position, I think that he will be a, you know, a really good piece for us, being able to use him again, another guy. We talked about it earlier on. We're a positionless offense. Like, our tight ends can play running backs. Our running backs can play receiver. Our receivers can go play tight end. Our quarterbacks can go play receiver. Our, you know, we're going to – whatever you do, we're going to line you up everywhere. And so it's good to have him as another piece that can go in the backfield as well. What are you specifically looking for from Sims these first five practices, first part of spring? Uh, take care of the football. I mean, I, I know what he's got physic from a physicality standpoint. He's got you know really good arm talent. Uh, you know, I want to see him be accurate, and I want to see him take care of the football. We told all, we told everybody from anyone who touches the football, if you don't take care of the football, you will not play. And so you know, at every position, especially quarterback. You know, you you got to show that you're going to be responsible with the ball in your hands and make sure that we have it after, you know, every whistle blows. Do you feel like you're going to be able to do more of what you wanted to do uh, here than you were able to do in the previous stop? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would love, I guess, in the press conferences to make everybody feel good. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't know yet. I mean, after three practices, I, I've, again, never had this many big human beings before, you know, large human beings, especially this many tight ends and fullback types and stuff. So, you know. We're going, to, we're going to strive to be what we're, you know, we're come into this world to be, which is physical and tough and run the football and, you know, take care of the football and keep the defense off the field. And that's what we're striving to do. Is it, do you feel like the way that you think about the game is a good fit for Big Ten? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I've never been in the Big Ten, but growing up, if you said, what is the Big Ten, I would have thought it would be a lot of how I think, you know. And it's not just ground and pound because with every ground and pound is a play action shot of 70 yards. So. I think that's kind of how we're built, and you know we're going to strive to to go in that direction. But again, whatever our personnel, uh, whatever personnel we have, is what's going to show up on the field on Saturdays. Who are a few of those uh, fullback types? Uh, I'm not. I learned a long time ago. Don't say a name because you'll forget one. And after three practices, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that after spring. But the, Well, I, you know, obviously wasn't here last year, and Ben came in the same time that I came in, and so I literally, you're at practice. You would have thought Ben was had been the starter here for the last three seasons, and again, I think that's Coach Rayola and how he does his room and how he teaches, and they're a brotherhood in that room, and uh, they take care of each other, and they're a very tight knit group. So he's uh, he's stepped right in, and I mean, it's just a natural fit, I believe. Uh, freak man, he's super gifted. Uh, really good, you know. Very, very, very good kid. Really gifted. Uh, flashes at times when you know when he does things. It's just it's mind-boggling to be that big and be able to move your body like he does. So, really excited where he's going off the field and on the field. So speaking with size, do you care to mention like how, how big he came into to, to camp? Uh, I mean, he's somewhere around 270, 280 right now. Speed still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty cool. It's, it's, it's good. What, what does he need to kind of stay on the right track in, in terms of his development? Uh, just maintain the focus on it off the field, coming in, studying like he's been doing, learning the offense, and just putting in, putting him in situations where he can be successful. I think it's as much on us as coaches as it, as it is on him. The easy things to say, well, he needs to do this to be successful, is what do we need to do for him to allow him to be successful? Yeah. 
uh, we're trying to show guys, uh, you know, what it's like to be a Cornhusker. And, you know, you're going to come and get coached. You're going to be respected and you're going to get coached hard and you're going to get developed into pro players if that's ultimately what you were destined to do. And you're going to be developed into great men, great husbands, uh, what, great doctors, great lawyers, if that's what you're destined to do. Uh, we're going to do it the right way. We've got a special place. We have a special fan base. We have unbelievable facilities. And it's an unbelievable opportunity and an unbelievable conference to do. You can accomplish any dream that you have if you come play here. Let's see you're sitting in front of a, a quarterback and you want to turn on an NFL and say, this is the guy that I kind of like want envision an ideal quarterback being in college. Who, who's the NFL quarterback you turn on? I mean, I, I like all of them. I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not putting pressure. I love watching Brock Purdy play. I think he's fun as heck to watch, not just because Chubb is here, but you know, seeing him at, when we were at Baylor and Iowa State is fun to watch. Uh, you know, you put me on the spot there. Uh, Dak Prescott, I love Dak Prescott. Obviously, you like Mahomes, like all those guys. But uh, again, I tell our guys, like, I'll put my dog out there to play quarterback if he takes care of the ball and helps us win games. So. We don't care what shape, size it looks like. We just want to take care of the football and, and be a winner. What's the dog's name? Uh, I have three of them. All right. Coach Satterfield is one of them. And uh, I have uh, Winnie and Annabella. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Mark.